In this video, I am going to discuss the actions and the regulation of glucocorticoids and one of the most important glucocorticoids that we know is the cortisol. So before going into the actions and the regulations, let's have a brief discussion regarding the location of the adrenal gland, the structure of the adrenal gland and the hormones which are produced by the adrenal gland and then we will discuss cortisol in detail, the regulation, the circadian rhythm as well as the actions. So first let's discuss location, structure and the hormones which are produced by the adrenal gland. As we all know that the adrenal gland is situated at the superior poles of the each kidney and when we take a cross section of the adrenal gland here in this diagram, we can see that the adrenal gland is divided into two portions. One is the outer portion which is called as a cortex, another one is an inner portion which is called as a medulla. Now this cortex is further divided into three layers from top to bottom. The first layer is zona glomerulosa. The middle layer is called as the zona fasciculata and the innermost layer is what is called as the zona reticularis. The zona glomerulosa is the one which is basically producing mineralocorticoids and aldosterone is the most important mineralocorticoid. The zona fasciculata produces glucocorticoids and cortisol is the most important glucocorticoid and the zona reticularis is the one which is producing the sex steroids. Now below this we are also having the adrenal medulla and the medulla is going to produce a group of hormones which are called as catecholamines which include epinephrine and norepinephrine. Next let's understand the regulation of secretion of cortisol. Now in order to understand the regulation of secretion of cortisol, we have to know what is the meaning of HPA axis. H stands for hypothalamus, P stands for pituitary and A stands for adrenal. So it is HPA axis. So this is the HPA axis and remember one of the most important regulator of the secretion of cortisol is stress. So whenever the body is under stress, this stress is going to excite the hypothalamus and the hypothalamus in turn is going to secrete what is called as corticotropin releasing factor. Now this corticotropin releasing factor from the hypothalamus via the portal blood vessels is going to enter into the anterior pituitary gland and it is going to stimulate the anterior pituitary gland and anterior pituitary gland is going to produce a hormone which is called as ACTH. ACTH is nothing but adrenocorticotropico hormone. So this ACTH is now going to stimulate the adrenal cortex and the adrenal cortex is going to produce the hormone which is called as the cortisol. Now whenever the secretion of the cortisol in the body is going to increase at that point of time cortisol itself is going to inhibit both the anterior pituitary as well as hypothalamus. Now this is what is called as the negative feedback mechanism okay and whenever cortisol secretion is going to increase it is going to have some actions now because of this actions it is going to relieve the stress and hence the excitement over the hypothalamus is going to reduce so this is the most important thing that you are going to write in your exams that is the hpa axis and remember that the most important Regulator of the secretion of cortisol is stress. Now what is the meaning of the circadian rhythm? Like many other activities of the body, even the cortisol also follows the circadian rhythm. The meaning of circadian rhythm is that the secretion of cortisol is not uniform throughout the day over a period of 24 hours. There are a lot of fluctuations in the secretion of cortisol which is going to happen. Now this graph best depicts as to what are the fluctuations in the secretion of the cortisol. As we can see in this graph there are a lot of bursts of secretion of cortisol which are occurring throughout the day. But as here we can see that the maximum secretion of the cortisol occurs somewhere between this time to this time that is somewhere between early morning 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock. So 5 o'clock to 9 o'clock is the period during which there is going to be maximum secretion of the cortisol 
and as and when the day progresses here we can see that the levels of the cortisol keep on decreasing now this pattern is not just occurring with the cortisol remember that this pattern is also occurring with the ACTH secretion as well as with the secretion of the corticotropin releasing factor which is coming from the hypothalamus next let's try and understand the actions of the glucocorticoids there are so many actions of the glucocorticoids it has got action on metabolism there is a special and very important action which is called as a permissive action a very again a very important action which is an anti-inflammatory action and anti-allergic action it has got actions on bone and connective tissue on the blood vessels on central nervous system cardiovascular system muscles it has got actions on kidney and water metabolism action is there even on the GIT and very important is it's an anti-stress hormone so it has got a very important role in stress so first let's start with the actions on metabolism so first let's try and understand the carbohydrate metabolism the underlying thing is that whenever the levels of the cortisol is going to increase it is going to increase the glucose levels which is going to result in hyperglycemia now how does this occur this is going to occur by two important mechanisms one is that cortisol is going to stimulate what is called as hepatic gluconeogenesis okay so what is gluconeogenesis It's the production of glucose from the non glucose compounds and the second important thing is that cortisol is also going to inhibit the glucose utilization by the cells so whenever the levels of the cortisol in the body increases it can mimic diabetes and that condition is what is called as adrenal diabetes second is its action on the protein metabolism remember that cortisol is going to cause reduction in the protein in almost all the tissues except for in the liver now how does that going to occur that is going to occur because of two important actions of cortisol one is cortisol is going to cause what is called as proteolysis 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 means breakdown of the protein second is that cortisol is also going to cause a decrease in the protein synthesis okay so whenever there is proteolysis what is coming out of proteolysis there is increase in the production of the amino acids and all these amino acids are transferred to the liver that's why i said that there is a reduction in protein in almost all the tissues except for in the liver and these amino acids can also be used in the production of glucose by the process which is called as gluconeogenesis next is the action on fat metabolism on fat metabolism it is going to cause lipolysis and hence there is an increase in the production of free fatty acids next there is an important action which is called as a permissive action what is the meaning of permissive action is that glucocorticoids are very much essential for actions of other hormones and other metabolic reactions remember here the glucocorticoids are not directly causing these actions but just the presence of glucocorticoids is required for the actions of other hormones and also for some metabolic reactions there are lots of examples like glucocorticoids or cortisol is very much important for vasopressor and bronchodilator effect of catecholamines they are important for calorigenic effect of glucagon they are also important for lipolytic effect of catecholamines they are also important for the synthesis of surfactant in the fetal lung and they are also important for the development of hepatic enzyme systems in the fetal liver so remember the permissive action means the presence of glucocorticoids is required for the actions of other hormones but glucocorticoids directly are not involved in these actions next is a very important action which is usually asked also as a short note separately that is explain the anti-inflammatory action of cortisol so glucose uh, sorry the cortisol is going to block the early phases of inflammation okay sometimes it blocks the inflammation prior to the inflammation has begun and if at all the inflammation has already begun it helps in causing rapid resolution of the inflammation 
and it also increases the rapidity of healing. So let's try and understand as to how this anti-inflammatory action is going to occur. Cortisol is going to stabilize the lysosomal membranes. We know that lysosomes are having very important enzymes in them which help in degradation of the foreign particles or the foreign bodies. So cortisol is going to reduce that thing by stabilizing the lysosomal membranes. Cortisol is also going to decrease the permeability of the capillaries. Now when permeability of the capillaries is decreased, the fluid from the capillaries or the plasma from the capillaries is not going to enter into the interstitial spaces and this is going to reduce the process of edema. Edema is also one of the important, uh, uh, important thing which happens in inflammation. Cortisol is also going to decrease the migration of the WBCs into the inflamed area thus helping in anti-inflammatory action. It is also going to inhibit the process of phagocytosis. It decreases the formation of chemical mediators of inflammation like the leukotrienes and the prostaglandins. It reduces the production of the lymphocyte. It causes lymphocytopenia. Then it may also reduce fever by decreasing the production of interleukin 1, one of the cytokines which is produced from the WBC. So remember that all these actions are going to contribute to the anti-inflammatory action of the cortisol. Next, let's understand the anti-allergic action. So whenever I say allergy, the most important chemical mediator of allergy is histamine. So anything which is anti-allergic, it has to block this histamine. So how does cortisol is going to cause this anti-allergic action? It is going to decrease the number of basophils because we know basophils are going to secrete histamine. Second thing is it is going to inhibit the degranulation of the mast cells. Remember the two cells which can produce histamine, one is basophil, another one is the mast cell. So ultimately what cortisol is doing is cortisol is causing uh, decreasing the histamine induced allergy. Next understand the actions on the cardiovascular system. On the heart, cortisol is going to increase the myocardial performance. That is cortisol may increase in the cause an increase in the heart rate. Cortisol may also cause an increase in the force of contraction of the heart. On the blood vessels, it helps in maintenance of what is called as vascular reactivity. Now what does that mean is, it increases the responsiveness of the blood vessels to catecholamines. See, whenever catecholamines are secreted, generally there is going to be vasoconstriction and glucocorticoids promote these vasoconstrictions which is occurring because of the catecholamines. That is what is the meaning of, it helps in maintaining, it maintains the vascular reactivity. Next, we have one more very important action which is on the bone and the connective tissue. So, cortisol is going to inhibit the collagen synthesis and we know that collagen is one of the most important constituent of the capillaries. So, when enough collagen is not formed because of excessive amount of cortisol, what is going to happen is the capillaries are going to become very, very fragile. So, because of that, whenever there is a injury, a minimalistic injury which usually shouldn't cause bruising, here, in cases of excessive presence of cortisol, the capillaries will be easily ruptured and there is going to be an easy bruisability on the body. Next important action is on the bone that cortisol is going to inhibit the bone formation. Now, how does it do that? It is going to reduce the synthesis of type 1 collagen. This is one of the most important collagen which is present in the bone. It is going to inhibit the osteoblast formation. We know that it is the osteoblast which is helping in mineralization of the bone. So when osteoblast is inhibited, the mineralization of the bone is not going to occur. It is also going to reduce the absorption of calcium from the GIT. Again, calcium is required for the mineralization of the bone and it also facilitates facilitates what is called as a bone resorption. What's the meaning of bone resorption? Bone resorption is nothing but demineralization or removing of the calcium from the bone and this calcium is going to enter into the plasma. Okay. So ultimately what cortisol excess or cortisol does is it is going to decrease the bone mass and it is also going to decrease the mineralization. So whenever there is an excessive am amount of cortisol, this can uh, precipitate osteoporosis because of all these actions. Next, let's uh, look into the actions of cortisol on the blood cells. On the blood cells, the cortisol is going to cause eosinopenia, lymphocytopenia and basopenia. That is, the cell count of eosinophils lymphocyte and the basophils is going to reduce 
and it is going to cause a mild neutrophilia that is an increase in the neutrophil count little bit of erythrocytosis because it stimulates the erythropoietin hormone and it is also going to result in an increase in the platelet count which is called as thrombocytosis. On the muscles as I have already told you in the protein metabolism that cortisol is going to cause proteolysis and muscles require a lot of protein uh, to be functioning normally so there is going to be a reduction in the muscle mass as well as the strength. Next is on the kidney and the water metabolism. Glucocorticoids are going to cause excretion of the water. This is going to occur because glucocorticoids are going to increase the glomerular filtration rate and they are also going to inhibit the levels of the antidiuretic hormone. Next is on the GIT. Glucocorticoids have two important actions on the GIT. One is glucocorticoids are going to stimulate the secretion of HCL. So in condition where glucocorticoid excess is there, it may result in gastric acidity and also the peptic ulcer disease. Second is that it is also going to cause a decrease in the calcium absorption as I have already told this action when I was discussing the action of cortisol on the bones. On the CNS, glucocorticoids do influence mood and behavior of the person. They are going to decrease the rapid eye movement sleep and they are going to increase the non-rapid eye movement sleep. They can cause both elevation as well as depression of the mood and they can also sometimes result in impairment of the memory. Now let's understand the role in stress. First see as to what is stress. Any change in the environment that alters the optimal steady state in the body. The body is always in an optimal steady state and change in the environment which is going to alter this optimal steady state is what is called as stress and glucocorticoids are one of the most important hormones to protect the body against the stress and whenever there is no glucocorticoids in the person that that point of time when the person is under stress the person is going to succumb to the stress and all these things whenever the basic thing is that the glucocorticoids or the cortisol levels are going to increase whenever the body is in any kind of stress let it be a physical form of stress or let it be a psychological form of stress then all these actions which I have told to prior to this are going to come in and these are all the actions which are going to combat the body against the stress so when glucocorticoids are not there the person is going to succumb to stress so let's just recap as to what all we have learned in this video we started off with the location structure and the hormones which are produced from the adrenal gland then we learned regarding the cortisol's regulation, the circadian rhythm. Remember, the most important part which you are supposed to write in regulation is the HPA axis. And then you should write that stress is the most important regulator of the cortisol. Then we learned regarding the circadian rhythm. And remember that 5 to 9 a.m. This is the time when there is maximum secretion of the glucocorticoids because it follows the circadian rhythm. And then we have also gone through so many actions of the cortisol like the action on metabolism, the permissive action, the anti-inflammatory action, uh, the anti-allergic action, the action on bone, the action on connective tissue and so many others. So this completes this video. Hope so this video will be helpful for you to write this answer in your examination. If that's the case, do share, do subscribe and do like this video. Thank you.